Hey YouTube, welcome back to Dwayne's World. So I'm very excited about today's video because I'm going to do the opposite of what a lot of people prefer to do. You want to find out what I'm talking about? You better stay tuned. All right, so Dwayne, what are you doing that's the opposite? Well, first of all, it looks like it's going to rain here in the next few minutes, so i got to go ahead and knock out this intro. But what I'm going to be doing is the opposite of what most people do, because most people want to take a smooth roller and put a groove roller on their California trimmer. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to go from my groove roller to my smooth roller, because I want to see how well it's going to stripe on my perennial ride. But my smooth roller is in pieces, and it's in pieces for a couple different reasons, but nonetheless, I thought it'd be a cool video for me to show you guys how to put it all back together. Now, the bearings have already been removed. Now, if you're curious on how to remove the bearings from the roller, I'm gonna include a video in my description where Real Rollers actually shows you how to remove the bearings from your smooth roller assembly. In my video today, it's gonna to be the reassembly of putting all that stuff back together. So with that, I'm gonna show you that in today's video. Hope you guys enjoy. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble here my California Trimmer Smooth Roller. Now there's a couple things you're looking at here and you may be curious, well, why is it all disassembled? The only reason why I disassembled it was because of the fact that when I purchased the Groove Roller, my plan originally was to do a Smooth Roller to Groove Roller swap out. But because of some technicalities I was having with that particular Groove Roller, the manufacturer stepped in and they went ahead and sent me an entire assembly, leaving me with an extra assembly. Now this part here, which is the main bracket for the unit, generally is green. I decided to spray paint it black. I won't get into the reasons why. It was for a different project that kind of fell through. So ultimately I decided to just go ahead and leave it and not spray it back to the green, which is the factory color, as you can see on the end bracket there. The smooth roller, however, I did recently repaint. I went ahead and used a Rust-Oleum uh, metallic spray paint, and I think it looks awesome. And the only reason why I did that is just because the front roller that I have was showing a lot of wear. So I kind of figured, you know what, this would be a cool opportunity to kind of freshen it up as well as replace the bearings, which I think most of you guys may want to see because you may have to do this in the future if your bearings ever fail. Now the bearings that you're looking at here, even though you see a couple of different varieties, they're all the same. I just wanted to point something out though. The two that you're seeing and that you're looking at here, I got these from Real Rollers. So Real Rollers sells replacement bearings because there are going to be times, even though these are sealed bearings, that they could fail. And when they fail, they seize up and your roller won't spin. The reason why I have the actual bearings out of the particular roller is because when I was doing the groove roller swap out, these collars that sit in the bearings were basically seized in. In order to pop them out, unfortunately the bearing came out at that same time, which isn't a big deal because I can go ahead and put them back. The blue bearing that you're looking at here is exactly the same as the black bearing as far as the model number, just a different manufacturer. And this bearing number is the 6304 2RS. So this is a sealed bearing. They're sealed on both sides, so they are weather resistant. However, it is, I guess, possible over time where that seal can break down and moisture gets in, which ultimately causes the bearing to fail. So if you ever do need to replace your bearings, you can order these bearings from Real Rollers directly. Or this is an option I found on Amazon that actually works out really well as well and or is actually less expensive than going through Real Rollers. Now, quality-wise, I can't necessarily speak for this manufacturer. I don't know how long those bearings would last. However, it's a fairly simple process in order to remove if you ever did have to replace them in the future. So if you ever wanted to go with the Amazon option here, just to show you guys that I've actually used them in the past and it works out really well, is this is my smooth roller for my McLean that I ultimately switched out to a groove roller as well. And as you can see here, I have those bearings or that manufacturer bearing in this particular roller and I used it for almost a season. So they definitely work and I've had no issues with it. However, if you prefer to go with more of an OEM bearing, go with the one from Real Rollers. All right, guys, so let me give you a quick tip here on something you can do if you ever have this problem. Sometimes when you take apart the roller and you're taking out your bearings, this collar may actually get stuck or seized into the actual bearing itself, making it very difficult to be able to remove that portion of it, which you would have to in order to replace your bearings. So what I did is I took a piece of two by four and I basically cut a hole the same size as the diameter of my collar. So then what I did is I flipped it over into the hole. I took a socket that matched the diameter of the collar and I basically just placed it there. And I used a hammer to be able to knock it out, which ultimately separated the two, as you can see there. And that worked out really well made it much more easier for me to be able to separate the collar from the bearing. Hope that helps. And with that, let's get on to the assembly. All right, so let me show you guys how I'm gonna install the bearings now in the roller. So all I'm gonna do is I'm basically just gonna set it up top there and I just wanna give a little bit of pressure just to kind of help get it to set. 
Now there's a couple ways to do this. You can either use a rubber mallet to be able to hammer in that particular bearing, or you can use a two by four and a hammer to be able to kind of press it down into it. Now it's gonna take a little bit of work, it's gonna take a little bit of force, uh, but at the same time you do wanna try to get your bearing in as seated as flush as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm just giving it some light taps here, just kind of going all the way around. And it's gonna take a little bit of time, but at the same time, I just wanna make sure I do it right. All right, as you can see there, it's about halfway in, so I'm just gonna keep going a little bit longer. So after a couple minutes, there you can see almost, almost there, not quite there yet, so we're gonna keep going some more. All right, so after about five minutes, I finally got it in there. So as you can see there, now it's fully flat. I'm gonna go ahead now and do the opposite side and then we'll be good to go. As you guys can see here, I now have my bearings installed on either side. So now, all right, so now that I got my bearings installed, I'm gonna go ahead and just reinstall my collars here on either side of the bearings. So I got one there and got one there. Now this is probably the toughest part of the installation because one of the things you're gonna notice is as you take your bar here, it's not gonna simply just fit on there and there's gonna be no issue. In fact, it's, there's a slight, slight tolerance that really kind of makes this difficult to get. Now, sometimes you can get lucky and depending on how far your bearings are pressed in, you may be able to just simply slip it over there. But as you can see here, mine is not simply slipping over. So what I'll do is I'll line up the one side as best I can. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screwdriver and basically just try to pry that one side open a little bit more just to give it just enough to be able to slip on. Let me go ahead and readjust my camera right, here. So one thing I like to do to kind of protect the axle here, as you can see, it definitely does get corroded and there's definitely um, some water that can get in there, which ultimately can cause it to rust. So what I do is I'm gonna go ahead and just take a little bit of grease. All right, the grease I'm gonna use is the same grease I have in my grease gun, uh, what I use to service my California trimmer uh, on the Zerk fitting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rub that on the axle here. And again, all I wanna do is just do a light coat just to be able to protect it. All right, so what I'm gonna to do to kind of just help myself out is I'm going to just take the axle and just put it through slightly just on this one end here. And this is only thing this is going to do is kind of hold the one side in place for me. So basically since I have my axle in place on the opposite side here, what I basically wanna do is I just wanna take my pry bar and I'm just gonna to try to open up this bracket enough by pressing it between the bar and the roller and you can use a flathead screwdriver as well if you don't have a pry bar. And I just wanna get this opened up far enough where it can slip on, as you can see there. So again, it's just that little bit of leverage there that you need in order to actually get this lined up. As you can see here, we're not perfectly lined up, but I can use my hammer um, or even just my hand here just to be able to get it lined up for where I need. Now, and all I'm gonna do is push my axle uh, through the rest of the roller. Go all the way through, perfect. So I did have to fiddle around with it just a little bit in order to get the axle to come out on the opposite side. So all that's left now is I'm gonna go ahead and secure these collars. You got the one there and you got the other one here that is the actual bracketry for the California trimmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, and with that, all that's left is go ahead and install it on the California trimmer. Okay, so as you guys can see here, I went ahead and placed my California trimmer up on the 2x4 blocks uh, just to kind of help lift it up off the ground. The one thing I would say you want to be cautious about if you're doing a roller swap out or you're adding a roller to your California trimmer is to put something behind the California trimmer uh, to help support it because as you take the roller or front assembly off, it definitely will shift the weight and your mower will fall back. So for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and place a caution cone behind the California trimmer. All right, so as you guys can see there, I went ahead and just placed the caution cone uh, before, behind the California trimmer. So that way, if, if it does lean back, it's just giving you a little bit of extra support back there, which will definitely help out. All right, so I just wanna point something out before I go ahead and swap out this groove roller for my smooth roller. The first thing I will say is I absolutely love this groove roller, and this will be the roller that I put back and will be my primary roller for my California trimmer. I just want to point a couple things out as it relates to the design for those of you that are brand new to California trimmer. 
This roller was not offered when I purchased my California trimmer a couple of years ago. This is a 2022 model, I believe, meaning it just was released earlier this year. And I absolutely love it. I had to purchase it as soon as I saw that it was available. Now, one of the things that I think really takes it to another level, you can find other groove rollers on the market. But what I really like about this one, as opposed to other groove rollers, is the other groove rollers have a single one-piece design, just like your smooth roller. However, on the California trimmer design one here, as you can see, there are two independent sides that can spin freely from one another. Now, you may ask, well, what is the benefit of that? That looks cool, but does it do anything for me? Well, if you're mowing just straight back and forth, you won't see necessarily a benefit to this split roller design. Where you're going to see the benefit is when you're making turns. So as you're turning around, it makes it easier for you to be able to turn around just because of the fact that, you know, these can spin independently from one another, basically meaning they can even spin in opposite directions. So again, if you're doing a 360 turn, that will definitely help out. And number two is if you have a lot of turns in your lawn. So if you have a lot of turns in your lawn, like most residential lawns do, this is going to make it much easier for you to be able to maneuver around flower beds and driveways. So I absolutely love this and would absolutely recommend this if you do not have any type of roller at all, or if you have a smooth roller and want to upgrade to the groove roller, in my opinion, this is the one to go with. All right, so I just wanted to point something out before I go ahead and swap over the groove roller for the smooth roller. And that has to do with the new design of the California trimmer assembly here. And if you notice, for the most part, it's exactly the same with what appears to be one major exception. And that exception is how the axle is held in place now. So on the design of my previous smooth roller, as I showed you guys during the assembly, the axles held together with a collar that basically is tightened down with an Allen screw. And as you guys can see here, this is a different design that California trimmer has now implemented where the axles held together with the cotter pin. So the cotter pin, once you remove it, you will be able to push your axle out to the opposite side. And let me kind of move my camera around. And as you guys can notice now on this side, it looks like now it's a one piece construction, which means the axle does have to be pulled out in that direction. As were in the design I had, you can push the axle out either way. So it's a little bit of a different update. In my opinion, this design appears to be much simpler and easier to possibly operate. Uh, but at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and just remove the entire assembly. So I won't necessarily be messing with that axle, but it is something I wanted to point out if you do have the newer design. All right, so to go ahead and remove the roller assembly, it's very, very simple. All you're going to do is remove the 7 16 bolt there, which is held on the opposite side with the Phillips head screw. And then you're going to remove this 3 quarter inch bolt, which there's also another 3 a quarter inch bolt on the opposite side. You will need to hold one side of it as you're unscrewing the opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Try to cut bars off. All right, so once you got your bolts out, all you're going to do is go ahead and push on this axle to be able to push it through. As you guys see there. And there is the roller assembly. So one thing I wanted to point out here is that you're going to want to reuse these plastic sleeves that basically sit on the inside of the housing uh, of the bracket. So you want to go ahead and reinstall those. Now, I don't even remember. I think when I purchased my um, roller assembly, they weren't even included. So they may be the original ones that were used on the caster wheel. So you absolutely want to make sure you save those and you do not get rid of those. I'll also go ahead and reuse the two washers. All right, so now that I got my axle through and I have my washers in place, I'm going to go ahead and just re-secure the three-quarter inch nut along with the 5 16 height adjustment bolt. Reinstalled the 7 16 bolt there and a three-quarter inch nut there. And now all that's left is to go ahead and tighten it down.
All right, so one thing I just wanted to point out as it relates to this three quarter inch bolt here, you can over tighten this, which will make it very difficult for you to be able to remove your high to cut bar. However, there's kind of a happy medium where you do not want to have it too loose. And you'll know you have it too loose as you're mowing. If you're noticing that your assembly is rocking and moving back and forth, it shouldn't. It should be solid. So that's where a lot of people, I think, make the mistake of having this too loose. And then as your roller is going over bumps, it's flexing, and that's affecting your height of cut and your quality of cut. So again, when you're mowing, always pay attention to this bar here to see if you're getting any uh, upward and downward motion. And if you are, that probably means you're a little bit loose here and you need to tighten that up. All right, so there she is, all assembled. You know, the one thing I'll say is I absolutely prefer the look of the groove roller. But one concern I had was how bad the black roller assembly would look on the California trimmer, being that it was originally green. And I got to tell you, the black actually looks pretty good. It's definitely surprised me. You know, so the fact that it matches the handlebars, I think kind of brings it all together and it just blends in really well. You know, so with that, very happy with it. Let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the video. All right, so when it comes to the groove roller, the smooth roller swap out, I know that's not a common thing and most people are not gonna be doing that. And it's not necessarily the purpose of this video. I just wanted to try it out on my lawn and see how well the smooth roller performs as compared to the groove roller. But my plan is I'm going to put the groove roller back on my California trimmer uh, pretty soon thereafter. Now, when it comes to the bearing swap out, that is something I wanted people to take away from this video because unfortunately that is something that can happen to you if you do have one of these roller assemblies. Now, thank goodness Real Rollers put out that video on how to replace the bearings because when it happened to me where I had a failure with my McLean roller, it was great that they had that video for me to be able to pop these bearings back out. Now, even though as good as that video was, I wanted more information on how to go ahead and put everything back together. So that's why I created today's video is to show you guys how to reassemble everything if you did have to do one of those bearing replacements. If you guys enjoyed today's video on the California trimmer, um, I will be putting out a back lapping video very, very shortly. So please look out for that. Uh, please make sure to give me a like, comment on this video and subscribe. And as always, be excellent and party on.